says, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The word of God is saying this to you today. Be careful for nothing. This is Paul speaking through the revelation that God has given him. He's telling the church, he's telling the body of Christ today, be careful for nothing. That means be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. I'm going to give y'all something today. The enemy knows if he can get you in anxiety. Anxiety means dread. It means uneasiness. It means being rest, not having rest. It means being fearful. It means being agitated. The enemy know if I can get you in anxiety, you cannot hear what the Lord wants you to hear. Amen. You cannot do what the Lord wants you to do because anxiety weigh you down. Go with me to Proverbs 12, 25. There's people in this room that's full of anxiety. And God said, you're going to be loose today. Do you believe you're going to be loose today? Amen. No, I'm going to say this. You already loose. Amen. Proverbs 12, 25. It says heaviness. That's anxiety. I want y'all to catch this. Anxiety in the heart of man make it stoop. That means anxiety in your heart brings depression. Uh-oh. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to tell you why you're depressed. Because you are anxious. You are in uneasiness. You are not having rest. You in dread. You in fear. You are agitated because it's coming through anxiety, and that's where depression comes from. He said, heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop. But check this out. I'm giving you a good word today. But a good word make it glad. Oh, my goodness. The word that you need is the word of God. When you are way down, when you are heavy, when you can't get through, you got to go in the word, get a word, and you won't be depressed. Heaven is in the heart makes a man what? Depressed. Uh-oh. I got to take off my shoes again. <laughs> Heaven is, I'm giving you what's going on with you. Heaven is, is uneasiness. Uneasiness come in every area of your life. If you're worried about your children, uneasiness. If you're worried about your money, uneasiness. If you're worried about your health, uneasiness. If you're worried about your job, uneasiness. What is your heart doing? It's becoming heavy, and then you become depressed because you ain't let go of it. And you ain't receiving a good word to make you glad. God come in here to root up and to tear down Miracle Temple. And if I got to start in here with you, it's all right. Because God had to start with me. Sometimes we don't realize that we're anxious because we're used to it. We are used to that feeling of being anxious. We're used to that feeling trying to fix something. If you are anxious in your finances, you've been trying to fix them. You've been trying to pay Peter Far from Peter to pay Paul. You've been trying to find a quick fix. It's uneasiness. It's a dread. It's a fear. You're agitated. That's what anxiety is. Go with me to Psalms 94. Let me make sure that's where I want to be because guess what? A good word is going to make you glad today. That's what the Bible says. A good word will make you what? 94, 19, listen at this. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delights my soul. What is he saying? You have multitudes of thoughts that bring anxiety. But he said, but he will comfort your soul. How does he do it? With the word. You're going to find comfort through the word. And if you ain't getting in the word, you want to hold on to anxiety. Anxiety will weigh you down. Make you weak, and that's when the enemy say, come on, boys, we can come in now. So if you don't lose that anxiety, you're going to be weighed down. You're going to become depressed, and then he got oppression in there, and you can't move. This is what the enemy is doing to the body of Christ because we allow him to when we get worried about different things. 
You can be seated. So we see that he says that when we have heaviness in our heart, it stoops, right? We become depressed. But God began to take me through the word of God and show me in the different areas. Y'all remember in 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, um, Saul's father sent him out to find his lost donkeys. He was worried about those donkeys, so they looked and looked and couldn't find them. And all of a sudden, Saul told his servant, he said, let's go back because my father is quit worrying about the donkeys and he'll start worrying about us. See, he, first it was a material thing he was worried about, right? The donkeys. And then he turned around and then he said, he'll be worried about us. So we worry about many things. And those many things wear us down. The enemy know if you take a thought in an area and you keep pondering over that area, it will weigh you down. That's how the enemy weigh you down through your thoughts. And it comes through your five senses. Anything you see that you got to have will weigh you down. Anything that the enemy puts before your eyes, men, whether it's a woman, woman, whether it's a man, if he keep putting it before you and saying, that's what I need. I'm tired of being by myself. I'm tired of being lonely. I want to have somebody on my arm just like everybody else. It will make you depressed. It will make you anxious. It will make you flirty. It will make a spirit of perverseness come in because that's something that you got to have. And by you not having it, it weigh you down. I'm tired of coming into an empty house. It will weigh you down. But a good word will make your heart glad. This is why you got to go into the word of God and, and speak to yourself. God, you will never leave me, nor shall you forsake me. I'm not alone. I have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in my house. I bind you, you foul spirit. Amen. This is what we're supposed to do as believers. You're weighed down. Because I'll get back to Martha. There was Martha, and there was Mary. And I see him right now. Knock, knock. Jesus at the door. They open the door and say, come on in. He come into the house and Martha go over here and fly over here. And she's cooking and a cleaning and trying to serve. And old Mary, Jesus sat down and she got at his feet. She went and moved from the feet of Jesus. Because Mary knew by being at his feet, the more I stay at his feet, I ain't going to be anxious. I ain't going to be weighed down. Even though things are going on around me, I know what the word says. But Martha said, Jesus, Master, why don't you tell Mary to come help me? He said, Martha had to call her twice. Sometimes Jesus got to call your name twice because you, you ain't here. He said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled. That means you in an anxiety about many things. You are troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen what's best. So what is he saying to you today? All of our troubles and all of our concerns come through what we're thinking about outside of what his word says. Y'all got to understand this. We are in the world, but we don't do what the world does. That means whatever the world is going after, we shouldn't be going after. Whatever the world is trying to do, we shouldn't be trying to do it. And see, the enemy know if I can get your mind off of kingdom, and get your mind on the world, you're going to become anxious because that's what the world is. The world is full of care and it's full of trouble. Then he was taking me. I love this scripture right here. Y'all used to this. Go to Matthew 6. Y'all, isn't the word good? Isn't the word good? Matthew 6. Y'all know what Jesus was doing. It was a sermon on the mount. He began to tell about almsgiving. He began to tell about prayer, fasting. He began to um, talk about these things. Why was he talking about them? Because these are kingdom principles, y'all. This is what we live by as kingdom folk. And this is why I advise you, go study up on the Sermon on the Mount, and you shouldn't have a problem. Amen. If you study up on Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you shouldn't have a problem. Right. There'll be a lot of repenting. There'll be a lot of crying out. There'll be a lot of, Lord, I know that you gave me mercy, but I need some more new mercy every day, like you say, because the Sermon on the Mount will show you you, and it will show you the kingdom. So he talked about all these things, but he stopped me right here. Listen at verse 19. Lay not up 
for yourself treasures upon this earth. Treasures is something that you value. It is something that you hold on to. Treasures can be your house, it can be your cars, it can be, you know, possessions, whatever that you're holding on to, that's a treasure. He said, where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Why did Jesus say that? Jesus is saying, I'm telling you now in advance, you are kingdom. You're not of this world. You're in this world, so don't be storing up. That's what lay up means, to store up and gather treasures upon this earth he said why because these things shall leave that's why he used a moth a moth takes and eats eat through stuff rust is like corrosion this is why he used these terms to let us know as kingdom people don't you gather up stuff here why is he saying that he said because naked in ecclesiastes 5 says naked you come in here and naked you going out so everything that you gathered up Somebody else is going to get it. That's why people writing policies on you. Because they're trying to gather up. You know, children wait for parents to die so they can gather up because they're money-minded. The Bible says the love of money is what's the root of evil, not the money. People love money so much they don't rope people off. How you know? They got insurance people coming to the house. And the parents are living longer than the kids. But kids trying to write something up to, to make sure there's something left. But he said, you can't lay up your treasures on the earth. You can't store it up because it's going to vanish. He, that's why he tells us not to lay it up, not to store it up. It's okay to have things, y'all. But things shouldn't have us where we want more things. This is why he tells us, naked you came in. Naked, you going out. We ain't never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Have anybody? No, you ain't. But you seen family behind the U-Haul waiting till they die to get the check. That's right. So God is saying don't lay up stuff because guess what? By doing that, you have anxiety. You have care. Because you worried about what about this and what about that. There's a way you do it. But you don't do it trying to take care of you because you should know who's already taking care of you. Then he goes on to say, he said, don't lay that up. But then he said, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. Focus on kingdom. When you focus on kingdom, you ain't going to be trying to lay up stuff. You ain't going to be trying to, you know, people got some stuff that they don't want nobody to touch. You know, they keep getting more and more. Have y'all noticed that? You get one thing, but it's never enough. You're still trying to get more. That's not enough. I need more of that. It, it, it even comes down to food. We need more food. That's not enough. Some people got a lot of food and can't even eat it. They just know that they got it. Some people got a lot of food that's out of date and can't eat it. But they look in their house and think that they're flourishing because they got a lot of canned goods out of date. That's laying up and that's storing up. You know you can't eat it all. I remember my daughter, she come home from college. She said, Mama, ain't no snacks in this house. I said, you ain't in here no more. <laughs> me and my daddy, me and your daddy don't eat stuff like that. Well, Mama, what am I going to do? I said, what are you going to do? You grown now, what you going to do? I got some cereal up there. We may eat some cereal for a late night snack, but I ain't trying to lay up and store up nothing. Mama, this is that ain't in here. I said, uh-huh. Go and get you a sandwich. <laughs> we don't do that no more. Why? Because God is telling us, why are you laying up this stuff? And, and this is funny. Sometimes they come and they say, this is out of date. I say, dang, because we ain't using it. So what? what? What's happening? We're storing up stuff that's out of date that we ain't using no more. But when you open the refrigerator, as my husband say, fridge, you open it up, you see all this stuff, but nobody can not use it because it's out of date. What do we do? Store it up, but we ain't using it. Does that make sense? So this is where he's saying anxiety is coming from. Then he goes on down. I like this part here where he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. If a person treasure is dealing with the things that they possess, that's where their heart is going to be. That's what they're going to be focused on. But he wants us to focus on the kingdom, y'all. God is giving you a principle here. The more you focus on the kingdom, God's way of doing things, you won't be in anxiety. You won't be in stress. 
You won't be in worry. You won't be in uneasiness. Why am I saying this? Because God said the body of Christ is so full of anxiety about things that they cannot hear what the kingdom has to say. Everybody's after something. Never satisfied. See, if you never saw, if we had uh, horses and buggies, somebody would be trying to get a better horse and a better buggy. Because they're looking at what somebody else got. It's okay to get an update, but if you don't need the update, why are you getting an update? I remember I would tell my daddy about his phone. Daddy, that phone out of date, you need to go and get a phone. He said it can die. I ain't getting there another phone. It do what it need to do for me. <laughs> you need to hush, because every time you say I need an update, my phone die. So hush. <laughs> daddy said, I'm keeping this phone <laughs> as long as this phone can be kept. And I'm picking on daddy over there because I remember one time I said, daddy, you need to get an update. He had a phone. He said, I can throw it in water and it'll keep right on working. So daddy would come to the house, y'all. he will throw the phone down. Say, see, that's what kind of phone you need right there. One like that right there that keep working. So one day I said, daddy, you need to go get you a phone. I don't need no phone. One day I get this unusual number calling me. I say, who number is this? Can't recognize it. I answer. He said, hey, I'm calling you from my car. <laughs> <laughs> my phone ain't working. So daddy got him an update, but he ain't updated since. What am I saying? You get necessities, what you need. But why get more what you need and can't keep it? I'm going to say it again. Why get more what you need and can't keep it? It don't make no sense. If you can't keep up with what you got, why are you trying to get more? That brings what? Anxiety. The enemy know that he can get us in anxiety when our money get low. How many get in anxiety when your money get low? Let's just be honest, church folk. Come on, you used to having this much a week, but now this week you ain't got that much. And all of a sudden you get an uneasiness. You're thinking about tomorrow saying, what am I going to do about tomorrow? You ain't even got through today. So the enemy is putting anxiety on you. Well, I ain't, might, might not have enough gas. Ain't no telling what might come up. I need money for this and I need money for that. What are you getting? Anxiety because you're looking at the little you have and you're not trusting the kingdom with what you have. So the enemy said, I can get you in anxiety that way. Or we get more instead of asking the Holy Ghost what we do with the more, what we do, go buy something else. Don't even live our life to the fullest, but we go get more and more and more. And guess what? We're never satisfied. This is Christian folk. Right. This should be what the world does, not what we do. So now we're living in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Because right. we're living like the world. The enemy say, if I can get more on you, the more anxiety you're going to have. Right. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're not going to be able to eat. And this is one thing that people do. Comparing yourself amongst yourself is not wise. Just because apostle do this in this area, it ain't for me to do what she does. Then I get anxious because I can't do what she does, but God didn't anoint me to do what she does, even though she got apostle in front of her name. We help one another. Now, she can throw down on them websites and stuff like that, but if one day I get a notion in my mind and say, I'm going to build me one too. <laughs> I'm going to build me one too. If a pastor can do it, I can do it. Then I'm getting all frustrated and she being all nice. I help you, a pastor, knowing I can't do it, but she being nice. So every day I'm getting frustrated because I want to do what she doing. Anxiety build up. Then the devil tell me, see, you can't do what she doing. Then I become depressed because I can't do what she do. Right. Y'all see where anxiety coming in? Yeah. Comparing yourself amongst yourself is not wise. So you have to understand where the anointing lies in your life. God has given all of us a grace to do what he wants us to do, and everybody else is not going to have the same function. So anxiety comes when we try to function like somebody else in the body of Christ, and we're not functioning that way. If God did not give you the gift of mercy or the gift of being a giver, then why are you trying to empty your pocketbooks and God ain't told you to empty your pocketbooks? He didn't tell you to give 500. He just told you to give what you got. And anybody that try to make you give outside of what the Holy Ghost is telling you, then they're going to have anxiety because you ain't doing what they told you. Oh, I'm talking. They're going to have much anxiety because they're worrying about what somebody else ain't doing. Uneasy.
easy. Dread, then they become depressed, and then they quit doing what they're doing because you ain't doing what you're doing. The devil is a lie. Somebody needed this word. Anxiety will put you in a place where you can't even get out the bed. Where you don't even want to get out the bed. Where you don't even want to hear nobody talk. Where you don't want to do nothing or hear nothing or see nothing. The enemy knows this, but it comes through the cares of this world. This is why he named those four grounds, but one that stood out to me when he said that some people build their lives, you know, their seed among thorns. And y'all know what thorns do. Thorns wrap itself around things that are growing and choke, choke it, right? So guess what one of the thorn does? It chokes the word because of the cares of this world. The, being anxious about things of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, it comes in and choke out because you're more concerned about what you don't have instead of giving God glory for what you do have. If we had people in this room to thank God for what you do have and quit worrying about what you don't have, you will see breakthrough in your life. Amen. It's always, I don't have this, I don't have that. When you learn kingdom principles, you are content in all things. You're not worrying about what this one got or what that one got or what you think you should have. You're giving God glory because you got a roof over your head. You got clothes on your back. You got shoes on your feet. You don't owe nobody nothing but to love them. So you're praising God for what you do have. And God say, because you're praising me because of what you do have, I can trust you with more. Some people can't be trusted because they don't know how to manage what they have, but they want to be a pastor, want to be a prophet. You can't be those things. God is not going to trust you with that when you can't even be faithful in your own house. You got to know how to walk by faith and not by sight. So this is the decisions that we got to make today. And I'm hurrying up this message and I'm throwing out as the Holy Spirit has given it to me because it was long. The Lord is saying this in that very verse of scripture when he went over not to store up, not to gather up. But he's telling us that our focus should be on the kingdom. This is what he say, how we correct these things. He's saying today that we cannot have two masters. We cannot have God and money. We got to make a decision of whom we're going to serve. If we're going to serve God, let's serve him. If we're going to serve money, go and serve money. But you cannot have two masters. You can't be for God and be for money at the same time. You have to choose one. And God is letting us know today, whomever you choose, that's your God. If you choose money, you don't go on into idolatry. And God said, have no other God before me. That's idolatry. Idolatry is deep, y'all, because you're, you're allowing things to take place of God. When you allow things to take place of God, you're saying these things should take care of me. So the more things you try to get, that's your God. That's what you are worshiping. This is why Jesus, with the Sermon on the Mount, if y'all pay attention to that sermon, before, not the Sermon on the Mount, when he got tempted in Matthew 4, did y'all see how Jesus went through all those temptations and it was dealing with what he's saying here in Matthew 6? When, he, when Satan said, if you bow down before me, he said, look around. I'll give you all of this. And what did Jesus say? I will serve no other God but God. I would not bow down to any other God but God. Jesus knew that was idolatry. And what are we doing today, church? Bowing down. Because the enemy tell you, you got to get that. You got to have that. You ain't never thought about getting that. You ain't never thought about having that until somebody showed up with that. You were content with what you had until somebody showed up with that. And this is why I say, y'all, I tell my husband this, and he know it. When special things come up, don't get me wrong. I thank God for people giving. Don't get me wrong. But I don't let things have me. He'll say, what do you want for this? Nothing. I'm fine. What are you going to get? Nothing. I'm fine. You got to get something. Many times I get stuff and give it to other people and go on about my business, and I'm just as happy and content 
as ever. But people look at me like, why you don't do nothing for you? I did. I did something for somebody else that's doing something for me. So whatever I get, I do what God tell me to do with it, and I'm satisfied. So when you're so content, you ain't worrying about what somebody else have. you giving God glory for what you have, so you don't have to get in anxiety. You don't have to get in worry. But sometimes people get in pride because they're looking at somebody got something and I didn't. Ah. Maybe it wasn't for you to get it. But guess what, y'all? You know what solves all of that? I learned this, the love of God. When you have the love of God, God will tell you what somebody need outside of somebody else telling you or when it's supposed to occur. He'll let you know what to get outside of what your pocketbook say. And he'll provide it. He just needs somebody to be obedient with it. It's just as simple as that. But do you know why we, we don't provide for each other? Or we don't provide for the house of God because anxiety. We, we have a fear of lack. And if we don't deal with that fear of lack, we cannot do what God wants us to do for the kingdom. We look more at us than we're looking toward what God is telling us to do. That's when anxiety come in because you have worries and you have concerns. But God is telling you today your first step is to choose whom you're going to serve. If you're going to serve God, God say, serve me. If you're going to serve money, serve money. But don't try to put me in the equation and act like you're still serving me because you got a middle. You got somebody in between me. Yeah. So I have learned, choose you this day. Yeah. Whom you're going to serve. Joshua said that. Are you going to serve the gods over there on the other side? Or are you going to serve? I'm going to serve God. As for me and my house, no matter what you do, right. I'm going to serve God. Yeah. Why would he say that? Because God has always taken care of him. When you know that God is the one that takes care of you, you don't have to be what y'all we weigh down because we don't trust God. Because we're choosing other things more than we're choosing God. Things pop up in our lives, then what we supposed to do? We supposed to seek him. We supposed to seek the kingdom. So this room today have some anxiety in it. We're concerned about many things. Then we begin to worry. Then we heaviness come. Then depression come because we're trying to figure out how is this going to work. But what is God saying to you today? What did God tell you to do outside of how you feel? So that's why you got to trust God in things. You cannot be trusting yourself. You can't even trust your money. Your money get legs and run off. Even after you pay your tithes, even after you pay your offering, your tithes, your arms. Even after you do all those things and pay people home you owe and you think you got an extra $100 bill, that $100 bills will take wings and fly. If you don't say, God, what would you have me to do with what's left? If you don't seek him with what's left, guess what? It's gone before midnight. Y'all, this is the truth. But God wants us to have things, but he don't want things to have us. And I'm getting so tired of these preachers. Saying they need all of this stuff. I ain't never seen so much mess in my life. I need this to fly here. I need that to fly there. Y'all, it's foolishness. That's why they got the airlines. In that case, all of us need a jet. Miracle Temple, I need a jet. And you know, doggone well, I ain't getting in it. <laughs> Everybody need a jet. That's, that's preaching. The five phone need a daggone jet. If he can get one, we can get a jet miracle temple. Everybody, I ain't going to lie. I don't need no jet. <laughs> I ain't going to lie like that. And do you know people are sowing into that? Wherever you need to go, God's going to make sure you get there, whether it's by boat, whether it's by plane, whether it's by airline. In that case, go and get them a train too. Why I got to be up in there? Maybe he wants you to get a train and go that way. It's cheaper. But everybody sow into that. They say they sold into that, but won't even sow into what God is doing right where they're at. Because they're saying if you sow into this, God's going to do this. Got something to tell you. You already done it. That weighs you down. Because the enemy, things like that, the enemy will make you feel like you wanted the least if you don't do it. 
So I'm telling you today, God is letting you know that things will bring anxiety. Do you know education brings anxiety? Education, jobs bring anxiety. Because when you can't meet what man wants you to meet, you get weighed down. You feel like you can't accomplish what everybody else has accomplished because they're telling you they're accomplishing this and they're accomplishing that. I got something to tell you, they're lying. They're doing stuff to get what they're getting. But when you're serving God, he will give you wisdom from above, not wisdom on this earth. And he will show you how to do things outside of what they're doing. Daniel in the Bible, he wasn't weighed down. He didn't do it their way. He did it God's way, and God promoted him. He turned the men's heart to promote Daniel. Daniel didn't have to do nothing but serve God and not bow down. So when we take the time and don't bow down to things, don't let things have you. God wants us to have these things. Anything that you're holding on to that you can't get rid of when the Holy Ghost is telling you you get rid of, that's your idol. A pair of pants. Lord, I'm going to lose that weight. I need them pants because I can't buy no more. I got a remedy for that. Give, and it shall be given back unto who? If you don't loose them pants, you can't get no more. But you're worrying about when you're going to get them pants. So you act like God ain't fast enough. God ain't going to let you go naked. You ain't going naked until you die. You didn't know that? Come on, the Israelites spent all that time in, in um, the wilderness. The shoes didn't wear out, the clothes didn't wear out. Same God. So what am I telling you today? God is bringing in this house today to let you know whatever you're anxious about, whatever you're worried about, he said, cast your burdens upon me. God said, I will sustain you. Cast your cares upon me. God said, only thing you got to do, everything that you're worried about. That's why that next verse, when it said, be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication. We're supposed to be praying to God about everything. And as we go to God, we're saying, God, I am concerned. But I know what you said. God, you told me not to be anxious. You told me not to worry. So, God, I'm coming to you because you're my loving father. God, you know more about the situation than I could ever know about the situation. So, God, I thank you that you have already made provision for it. And when you begin to thank God, that's why he said, be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests made known unto God. If you take the time with that one verse... We wouldn't be out here trying to obtain something that God is telling us we don't need. Right. We're always out here trying to plan to get something. Have you ever seen people when they wanted something, they'll lay outside a little bit this week, put $5 this week. Next week I'm put a little bit more because the bills ain't that much for that week. So I'm going to put about 30 this week. Then the, the following week, you know what? I can do 50 So you're looking for something for $150. Before you know it, you already gathered up. For it. When the church say, we doing so and so, you don't lay aside nothing. I can't do it. But for material stuff, boom, 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 something you want. What did that tell you? Who are we worshiping? Man, we're, we're worshiping things of this world. Know where your anxiety is coming from, y'all. When you know where anxiety is coming from, you can deal with it through the word. First thing, you got to know who you're serving. Is it God or is it mammon, which is money? Is it possessions? When you identify that, now go into the word of God and tear it down. And the word will give you life. God is saying in this room, be anxious for nothing. And once you go to him and seek him and with thanksgiving, that's when the peace of God comes that passes all understanding in your heart and in your mind. Your peace don't come until you let go of it and hold on to God. The enemy is building up in the church covetousness, idolatry. You know what covetousness is? Trying to have what somebody else have. You're trying to covet because they got it. You feel like you need it. But you don't know how long they've been waiting on it. You don't know what they did to obtain it. Maybe that's for them. That's not for you. And you building all of that up and you getting anxious for it. You getting anxiety. You can't rest. You up at night thinking about that thing. You can feel that thing. You got to have that thing. Getting no rest. Then when you get that thing, you still ain't satisfied with that thing. Right. Now you want something else. So God is saying be anxious 
for nothing. To get over anxiety, we have to know whom we're serving. The next thing is to go into the word of God, the thing that you've been anxious about. We want to root up. We want to tear down. We want to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself from what? Against the knowledge of God, bring into captivity what? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. As a man thinketh, so is he, so does he become. What are you thinking about the most is where the enemy have a stronghold in your life. What are you working towards the most is what the enemy is building up there in your life. So today in the name of Jesus, I come against anxiety which comes from fear. We bind fear right now in the name of Jesus. And we lose that God has not given none of us in this room the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. That's his word. So take the time to ask yourself, God, why am I anxious? What am I anxious about? What is the reason for me to be anxious when, God, I have everything I need in you? We got to focus on things above and not on things of this earth. When you become anxious, you are outspoken to. You begin to tell people what's on your heart. You begin to tell people, I ain't got it. And I wish they quit asking for what I don't have. Because I'm working towards what I'm trying to do. You anxious. Because if you roll everything over to God, whatever God asks you for, you ain't going to have a problem giving it in spite of what you're going through. Because you trust in kingdom. That's why he got down in there. Take no thought. Don't be anxious about what you shall eat what you shall wear, what you shall drink. He said, this is what the Gentiles do. This is what the heathens do. Don't you know your father know what you're in the need of before you ask? He said, the birds even eat. The birds eat. Do you see them gathering in the barns? <laughs> he said, the lily of the field, look how they grow. They're cast into an oven, and they even look better than Solomon. And y'all, Solomon was rich, wasn't he? He said, and don't you know that your heavenly father, don't we know that God is going to take care of us? If he took care of the birds, if he took care of the lilies in the field, don't you know that God is already done taking care of us? Aren't we better than the birds? He gave you dominion. He didn't give it to the birds. So that should make us think, why am I anxious? Why am I fretting over this? Why am I so, so, why are you so disquieted within you? So why are you so cast down? You have to ask yourself these questions and then you got to go into the word of God and begin to root up whatever you have planted through your thinking, y'all. God takes care of his own. We are citizens of the kingdom and everything you need, God has already provided. But guess how he do it? Day by day. And at the end of Matthew 6, after he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, his way of doing things, and all these things to be added to you, at the end, he know us. Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for itself. So I don't even go into tomorrow. I'm in today. See, you have anxiety when you're thinking about, Lord, I know we're going to eat today, but I don't know about tomorrow. My fridge already empty. We don't even think about tomorrow because we say, God, we thank you for the day. What got me depressed, y'all? I'll be going into tomorrow and next week. Had a fear of what was coming. A fear of the unknown. Then I get really weighed down. So you take one day at a time. Give us this day our daily bread. So come on, give God glory. At this time, we have any visitors that would like to stand.